Hey guys, welcome back. On today's episode, I'm going to show you guys a very useful tool called Laudable Debugger that allows us to debug our application, look into all the queries being run, database queries, find slow queries, find duplicate queries, and it will help us basically improve the performance of our application among a few other useful things. So to install this, and the reason we want to install this is because over the next few episodes, we're going to be using it quite a bit. Google uh, Laravel Debugger, and I also have the link in the description, guys, the GitHub link. You can go ahead and just uh, open it up. It's going to be the first link, very likely. Uh, it's from Barry VDH. And just scroll down until you see the installation process. Copy the composer command. And if you're typing it, make sure you add dash dash dev. That makes it so it's under the development environment. So if you install it on production, it won't be installing it because it could be a potential security risk. Uh, if you have this sh accidentally show on production, open up your application terminal. I'm using VS Code integrated terminal. Just paste that in and hit enter. And this will go ahead and install Laravel debugger for you. And after the installation do is done, it will automatically just work if you're on local development. And you will get something like this, guys. So it's going to be a nice looking bar with a menu. You can close it or minimize it if you like. And if you close it, you can hit the Laravel logo to open it up back again. And it has a different different uh, kind of menus for different things. So you can look at the timeline, how long, for example, booting or the application itself took. Uh, you can look at the exceptions you have. You can look at all the views loaded. And that's a nice part. You can look at the current route. The most important part for us for now is going to be the query section, which is kind of this database icon. And this will show you all the database queries that was executed. And as you can see right now, we are sending a lot of database queries. We have 17. And if you look at it, we are loading user number two. Again, we are using loading user number two again. A little bit more, we are loading user number two, user number two, two. I don't know, like 10 times we are using loading user number two. So that's not very efficient. And again, it's kind of telling you we have 17 statements, 10 of them were duplicated. So we can actually, in the upcoming episodes, go ahead and reduce some of this duplication. So very useful. Uh, you can also look at how many models you have loaded. So right now we have loaded 10 user models, five comments, and five ideas. So if you want to reduce that, you can kind of take a look here. And there is a kind of the, the session, if you want to look into the session, and then the request itself. Uh, one more thing is you can also look at your memory usage. So if you're trying to optimize the memory used in your application, you can kind of use this tool as well. Uh, the response time duration also something you could potentially work on and so it's very nice and in the upcoming episodes we will be using it to optimize our application a little bit and look into some performance tips now one thing you need to keep in mind is that uh, this debug bar is linked to your app debug config so if you go on your application and open up your .env file there is a section called app debug and this kind of controls whether or not you show exceptions error messages or not okay so if you have it on false and you have an error on your application it just shows you you know a 500 generic message okay but if you're enabling it it will show you the actual exception so uh, the debug bar is actually linked to this app debug so if you have it true it will go ahead and show the debug bar so if i go ahead and turn this to false and i reload the page it's no longer visible now if you guys remember in the composer command we had dash dash dev that also makes it so it's not installed in production so there is a little bit of a safeguard so you're not accidentally turning it on but as always again make sure you never have app debug enabled on your uh, you know production application just to be safe or you can just not install it on production so that's one thing so if you currently have your app debug false and you're not able to see it just go ahead and turn it on and you should be able to see the debug bar and that's it guys for the debug bar uh, i'm not going to go too in depth too in depth into it there is a few things we can do with it but for now just play around with the queries and see what are some places where we can actually optimize our application in the upcoming episodes we're going to be taking a more in-depth look at it and that's it for today's guys if you have any questions you can ask me in the comment section below and i see you guys on the next video have a great day bye